gentle and of course very modern apes previously on the wild tale of human evolution, we discussed the first apes to evolve, as well as the conditions that led to their proliferation. Apes originated in Africa with the likes of Proconsul and Akembo, but this is not where they would stay. Europe was opening up as the Middle Miocene began, thanks to a warming trend that began in the Oligocene. Around 16 million years ago, things were really heating up. Subtropical forests expanded into the Arabian Peninsula and up throughout Europe, additionally paving a way out east into Asia. Simultaneously, the collision of the continental plates gave rise to a land bridge that spanned the Tethys Sea and allowed faunal exchange between Europe and Africa. The early Miocene apes had brand new real estate at their disposal. Afropithecus, our monomorphic sclerocarpic feeder from last time, is thought to have given rise to the Griefopiths, a group of strong-jawed apes that would be the first out of Africa. Heliopithecus is the oldest ape found outside of geopolitical Africa at 17 million years ago, calling Ad Diptia Saudi Arabia home. Not much can be attributed to this animal, but the dental material found is a dead ringer for an ancient ape. Griefopithecus is the oldest ape outside of continental Africa at 16.5 million years ago and could be found in Pasilar and Kandir in modern-day Turkey. Unlike its probable ancestor Afropithecus, Griefopithecus was sexually dimorphic and known for its derived teeth and jaws. This ape's enamel is thick, suggesting a diet of harder foods, and it lacks cingula or ridges on the molars. This makes them well adapted for crushing and grinding rather than shearing, meaning Griefopithecus was likely exploiting hard fruits and nuts rather than leaves. However, outside of its jaws and teeth, this thing is still very basal. Griefopithecus moved around on the tops of tree branches more like a monkey than a true ape. The environment it lived in was harsher than that of the African apes. Dry woodlands and fruits that could possibly only be exploited seasonally. It was well equipped with strong jaws then to fall back on tougher materials such as nuts or unripe fruits when need be. While Griefopithecus was expanding out of Africa, another hominoid stayed close to home. Equatorius could be found on Maboko Island on Lake Victoria, where it dwelled in a mixed forest habitat. It may have been more terrestrial than contemporaneous apes, given its less dense environment, a notion supported by its hip morphology, which is similar to modern primates with terrestrial capabilities. Also in Africa was Kenyapithecus, who was like Griefopithecus in nearly every way. However, where Kenyapithecus sticks out is its face. This animal had zygomatics placed high above the jaws, as well as unique incisors. What this means functionally has yet to be seen. Nocolopithecus maintained African tenure as well and is known from a spectacular skeleton that preserves much of the animal. Nocolopithecus is beginning to show signs of ape-like locomotion as well in its spine. The transverse processes of the lumbar vertebra are angled towards the back rather than towards the belly. However, this ape still maintained the narrow monkey-style rib cage. Far to the west, in the south of the African continent, Otavipithecus can be found. It doesn't have much material to its name, but the preserved morphology is much like Proconsul. It has thus been suggested that Otavipithecus is a dead end ape, a radiation from Proconsul that journeyed far from home and went extinct in a strange land. All the apes so far maintain the monkey locomotor pattern, above branch quadrupedalism. This can be gleaned from the morphology of the spine and ribcage, as mentioned previously. But the limbs support this idea as well. Modern monkeys cannot fully extend their arms at the elbow, opting for stability rather than flexibility. Similarly, their wrists are stiff medial-laterally. All preserved arm and wrist material from the apes mentioned so far match this pattern. They have many characteristics that all modern apes have and no modern monkeys have, but the ape locomotor suite has not yet arrived on the scene. David Begun, in his book The Real Planet of the Apes, suspects that the first true great ape saw its origins in Europe. As the Miocene climatic maximum arrived some 14 million years ago, the apes had not yet settled Europe. But a mere 1.5 million years later, at 12.5 million years ago, we find Dryopithecus emerging in France. This ape is starkly different from the others we've talked about in this video. In the warm and mild forests of Europe, it evidently committed entirely to softer fruits that were available year-round. Its teeth are chimp-like with thin enamel and large incisors. Its lumbar vertebra are decidedly ape-like, and its wrists are highly mobile, suggesting a locomotor style that was more like an orangutan than a monkey. This would be the ancestral stock from which the rest of the European apes would seemingly specialize from. Out east, we find traces of an ape in Thailand as well. 
Korot pithecus is known from very little material, but what we do have looks similar to modern orangs. For instance, modern orangutans have a mandibular feature known as the anterior digastric, which can be found on a Korot pithecus, but no other Miocene ape thus far. By the end of the Middle Miocene, some 11.5 million years ago, the apes were stretched well into Eurasia. Back home in Africa, they continued to thrive as the mild Miocene climate nurtured their ideal habitats. However, deep underneath the ocean, the currents were changing. This upset would set off a climatic domino effect that would eventually lead to the Miocene climatic disruption and the return of heavy seasonality in Europe. This has been dubbed the Valesian Crisis, as the forests which the apes and numerous other animals depended on shrunk and eventually disappeared. Before this extinction fell into full swing, however, the late Miocene would yield some fascinating apes, some of which may carry the characteristics that would come to define the first hominins, our own evolutionary lineage. 